Hello everyone and welcome back to Through the Gun Sights. In the previous episode about VFX workflows, I did mention we are starting a new series about how we develop various elements of the game. So today I would like to invite you to join us for the second episode, which is going to be all about guns. In the past you have seen us uh, present to you a few screenshots and maybe shorter bits, but today we would really like to go in depth so without further ado, I will be giving the stage to Camille so he can really dive in deep and show you how it's done. Enjoy. Hi, my name is Camille Loco and I'm a senior hard surface artist here at Antimata Games. And today I'd like to take you on a tour and show you how weapons for video games are actually made. First of all, you need to understand what you're creating. So when it comes to weapons, this translates not only to surrounding yourself with references, because that's obvious you need to do it for every 3D model you're creating, but it also means knowing the weapon's history, as well as understanding how it works on a uh, mechanical level. This is helpful, especially when you're doing more complex pieces. Understanding why and how certain things align with each other saves you a lot of time. Secondly, you need to get your hands on a blueprint of the weapon, a vector drawing of the bullet, and the general dimensions of the weapon as a whole, and its barrel. And then you decide which parts of the model the player is going to see in-game, and divide your references accordingly. Once all of that is done, you can model out the bullet based on that vector drawing, and model out the general blockout uh, for the barrel. And that is your starting point that allows you to scale your references to the actual size of the weapon. The first big step is to create the mid-poly blockouts. We need to make sure the weapon's overall proportions feel good in-game, and this also allows the animators to start working on the weapons as soon as possible. The main area of focus here is to make the mid-poly model as close as possible to the silhouette of the final product, so you don't have to make a lot of adjustments later. If we're happy with the blockout during our testing, we move on to the high-poly part of the pipeline. This is when I combine Maya with ZBrush. So in essence, it's a mix of two workflows, the classic subdivision modeling techniques, along with the very popular Boolean workflow. It's really fun to imitate how these weapons would be created in real life, imitating real life CNC machines, I guess. Once this is done, we move on to the low poly phase, which is done entirely in Maya. Thanks to how the blockout is created, this part of the pipeline is a breeze. It just requires a couple of corrections, changes, reductions in poly count, and you're actually ready to begin laying out the UVs and baking out maps that are required for texturing. And most of our bakes are usually done in Marmoset Toolbag. Now, all of these steps allow you to move to the most satisfying part of the 3D model creation process, which in my opinion is texturing. So for this part, we use Substance Painter. Materials are methodically and thoroughly studied and analyzed. So what that means is, for instance, if we're doing um, metal textures for a weapons up or receiver, let's say it's the stamped steel material. We check how that particular metal behaves in the real world, and we check how it interacts with light. We then throw it into uh, the engine and check if that hyperrealism that we're striving for translates well into what you're looking at on the screen. And then, if required, we make any adjustments or, or changes. This by far is my favorite part of the pipeline, as it allows me to go to practically infinite depths when it comes to studying how materials behave. It's a fascinating topic. So whether it's color variations or roughness variations, discoloration, imperfections, or let's say it's wood, like if it's aged or like fiber patterns that appear on the wood, if it's polymer, uh, you have like different surface bumps and irregularities that really give the material its soul. This is the final part of the pipeline. And once you're done here, you can enjoy your finished asset. 
In any case, that's all from me. I'd like to thank you for staying a while and listening, and I hope you liked it. Cheers. And that is all for our episode about weapons today. I hope you guys enjoyed it and that you learned something interesting about how we make those sweet, sweet guns you will get to play with in the final game. If you have any questions about what you've seen today, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. Also, follow us on all of our social media. And thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in our next episode. And of course, see you on the battlefield.